My name is Elizabeth Willett, Senior Fertility Herbalist with the Natural Fertility Company. Um, we bring to you information and products from the naturalfertilityshop.com and naturalfertilityinfo.com. Um, thanks for joining me today. I am going to continue a, a little bit of a talk on some commonly asked questions that we get or moreover concerns that people reach to us, reach out to us about. We're going to talk about whether or not fertility herbs contain hormones. It's a very common misconception. So I hope to clear that for you. I'm going to do my best. I have some notes here. Um, so you'll see me refer to those just to be sure that I'm getting everything correct. But um, I want you to understand uh, herbs and their purpose and what they do and how they do it a little bit better. So hopefully that will come across in this talk. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, so we understand that understanding herbs, hormone-like actions is, is really confusing. Um, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of sites that claim uh, if you have a specific fertility health issue, you shouldn't take this herb because it contains estrogen or it can increase estrogen levels. You're going to hear and see in many places that plants contain phytoestrogens. You're going to see that word phytoestrogens a lot. So that's what I'm going to refer to, phytoestrogens or plant estrogens in this talk, just so you're aware. Um, plants do not contain hormones that are like the hormones the human body produces. They are not the same. I want you to understand that. And the next thing I need you to understand is that it's really important to know that herbs actually nourish the systems of the body so that they can function at their best. That's the purpose of plants. That's the purpose of the food we eat. Those are plants. That's the purpose of the herbs we use for fertility. They are plants as well. They nourish the systems of the body to help them function at their best, the way they were designed to function. They don't trick the body into action like medications do. Herbs have the amazing ability to work differently in each human body that takes them matching each individual's individual body's needs. They nourish the body. They provide um, vitamins and minerals and enzymes and all sorts of different um, you know, macro and micronutrients and fiber and all sorts of things that our body's systems need to function the way that they were designed to function. An herb is used to do that. And medications are used to trick the body into an action, which is sometimes incredibly necessary, right? I'm not here to bash medicine. But back to plants and hormones, um, plant estrogens, phytoestrogens, and even plant progestins, because those exist as well, are naturally present in many of the plants that we use as medicine and many of um, the foods that we eat, particularly those in the legume family, but a lot of plants that we consume in our diet and as natural therapies, herbs, herbal supplements, um, contain what are called and known as phytoestrogens or plant estrogens. They're not the same as the hormones that our body produces naturally, but some are similar and that's how they have an action on the body. They can be found, they have been found to behave like some of our natural hormones, um, some of those hormones that the body makes naturally and that's why they can have an impact and benefit our hormonal balance. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So often you'll read it's a bad thing, but um, in moderation, when needed, plant phytoestrogens, plant estrogens can be really beneficial to the body. They actually protect and offer protection from xenohormones and toxins, those negative hormones, those man-made chemical hormones that we get from our life, from our lifestyle. Um, those xenohormones contribute to hormonal imbalance and plant estrogens, phytoestrogens and hormones can help us, help protect us, help protect the body from um, all of those negative xenohormones. Um, phytoestrogens can help balance estrogen in cases where um, estrogen is high and it can help um, balance estrogen in cases where estrogen is low and I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Um, I have a small a little drawing. <laughs> You're going to love my ability to do art, but I want to try to explain this to you just a little bit better and hopefully you could see it. So this is my very rudimentary drawing of a cell, a hormone receptor site, essentially. Um, a cell with hormone receptor sites. These are those little, you know, fork looking prong things, right? Our cells have tons of them. Particular places have tons of them, right? So in our bodies, after we've, um, say, 
had a lunch meeting where there wasn't an organic option and water was bottled in plastic and or we rode the bus or we do this repeatedly regularly or we're not eating entirely organic or we haven't yet transitioned our body care products and our lifestyle products to natural ones we're still using conventional ones that are loaded with toxins they're all these little black guys floating around in our body all those xenohormones floating around their mission is to get to one of those receptor sites and latch on that's what they do within us when they do that such as here they actually kind of uh, they get stronger um, for lack of a better way of saying it and not getting too sciencey because that's not my purpose they kind of pulsate and get stronger and they can actually cause more receptor sites to uh, appear and open up because um, they're giving the body the message that there's a lot of hormones let's just use those that's what happens when there's hormonal imbalance when there's excess estrogen particularly so all of the good plant hormones and our body's natural um, hormones are in there too when we take an herb for example um, you have hormonal imbalance you know this you have excess estrogen and you start consuming a fertility diet and taking a dim supplement and uh, perhaps drinking red rat or red clover tea because you've heard of how nutritious it is nutritious nutritious it is you might be a little bit underweight and you've heard about its hormone balancing effects so your food and your dim and your red clover are all these little what I've drawn as turquoise or greeny sort of circles are in there too and they also are rushing to receptor sites and the more we eat of those the more there are in there to get to receptor sites and when they do make it to a hormone receptor site they block these bad xenohormones and xenoestrogens and toxins from those sites that is how they can be protective of our hormonal balance hopefully that wasn't too technical or hard to understand so um, phytoestrogens can actually actually have a direct action or an indirect action within the body direct plant estrogens bind to the receptor sites like I just showed you their chemical structure is very similar to our nat natural hormones that the body produces but they're not the same I've already said that I'm going to say it again research suggests that phytoestrogens, phytoestrogens are actually only about one four hundredth to one one thousandth of the potency of our natural hormones our natural circulating estrogens um, so while they are mild plant estrogens are mild and they aren't as strong as our body's natural circulating hormones they still can bind to those receptor sites and protect us and moreover nourish the endocrine system so the endocrine system can make more of the hormones that it needs for you to have hormonal balanced hormones um, they're low po plant estrogens are low potency we just went over that they're very gentle they can bind to receptor sites and this can actually help women with elevated um, estrogen levels lower them it's one part plant estrogens herbs can be one part of a program to lower elevated estrogen levels there's more to it you've got to make dietary changes you've got to make lifestyle changes to get rid of all of those sources of xenohormones that your um, that your body is using or getting them from I guess um, and work on helping the liver properly metabolize those excess hormones as well but plant estrogens can also help women with low estrogen to modestly really gently and easily raise estrogen levels um, again back to this isn't the so bad part about phytoestrogens they have a really great way of helping us achieve hormonal balance so again just to cover phytoestrogens actually support the body by binding to receptor receptor sites like you saw in my little drawing a few minutes ago helping to protect that site from being used by a xenoestrogen or a xenohormone which is really 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 strong they're very strong um, xenohormones I should go over again just to cover come from pesticides and herbicides on our food that we eat if we're not eating an organic hormone injected food animals if you're not choosing um, you know free range or ethically raised animals uh, organic meat uh, plastics most certainly plastics commercial body care um, cleaning products laundry uh, laundry care products laundry soap stuff like that um, polluted water hormone containing drugs um, some of you on this journey have been through IUIs and IVF, uh, um, IVFs or have tried birth control for a variety of reasons and while that's all fine because it can help some women those are hormone containing drugs and those that you're introducing 
um, xenohormones into the body and it can cause a situation of hormonal imbalance or excess. Um, so we want to be supporting the body in properly metabolizing that and herbs can be a part of a program to do that. Um, so the direct, the herbs with a direct um, action within the body um, are the ones that can bind to hormone receptor sites to block xenoestrogens um, and xenohormones from their harmful activity. And these are herbs that you've heard of. There are herbs like Don Quai, red clover, royal jelly, flax seeds, and soy. There are more, but those are just some that I thought would be probably commonly understood or heard of. And then there are um, phytoestrogens that have an indirect action or, or you know, a not a direct plant hormone. Um, they can also bind to receptor sites, but moreover, these herbs are the nourishing herbs, the ones that are balancers, endocrine system tonics. They nourish the endocrine system, which is the system that makes and coordinates where hormones need to go for balance. Um, these are herbs you've heard of too, probably. They are Vitex, Maca, Wild Yam, Tribulus. Those are some common ones that I'm sure that some of you have heard of. Um, these plants encourage the endocrine system to produce normal levels of its own hormones on its own. They're helping that system function the way that it was designed to function. Um, so the goal really with any natural fertility program, you guys, and you know this, is in part to help the endocrine system produce the hormones that it needs to produce to maintain balance, to help it function at its best as it was meant, made to function, um, with the hope that a fertility health issue will be relieved or subside. That is obviously our hope. It can take more than just one herb, one phytoestrogenic herb, um, and we know that it does, it's, the body is better supported by a well-rounded holistic fertility health program, but phytoestrogens can be a really important part of such a program. Um, and obviously other goals, symptom reduction, we know that that's why a lot of women come to natural therapies, but also pregnancy are truly um, important too, and hopefully bonuses to uh, helping your body maintain hormonal balance. Um, so I know that was a lot of information, and I know that uh, some of you will replay this hopefully to watch again to, to learn a little bit more. And if you have any more questions about herbs and their ability to help the body, support the body, nourish the body, support hormonal balance, protect us from xenohormones, we've got all that information on naturalfertilityinfo.com. And um, Sarah, my herbalist colleague, and I can help you uh, learn more and walk through that if you need to. So um, reach out to we herbalists on the team. We're Happy to give you any more information you need to know about particular herbs or um, about what you're going through. So we're here for you. So thank you very much for coming today. Um, anybody else has questions, reach out to us. Contact us buttons are in the top right-hand corner of each website, and we're here to help. Have a great day and a weekend. Take care. Bye.